Shalom, it's Mariah Lisa with Mariah Shelley Village. And I'm gonna be starting a new feature on this vlog where I'm going to introduce a black history topic or a black history bio in order for you to learn more about black history. I have been asked several times, you know, Aliza, do some more black history things um, on your vlog. So here I am. Um, I am basically just going to be introducing the topic, giving you some basic information about either a person or an event um, that has happened in black history. And I'll be leaving you with some teaching or some discussion points in case you want to utilize what I share in this video and make your own lesson or make some extension off the information that I share here, you'll be able to do so. So without further ado, our first black history topic is I taught a class last month for Black History Month, um, and it was basically, you know, all about the Pullman Porters, and I got a lot of positive feedback and reviews from it. Um, in fact, a lot of moms in my local homeschool group was like, can you do something on YouTube so we can kind of hear that information back? So that is the inspiration behind Pullman Porters being the very first Black History topic that I'll cover. Okay, so I'm going to first start with two um, books that I recommend with learning about this topic. So um, for each video that I do concerning, concerning excuse me, a black history topic, I want to be able to give you maybe like a picture book or a book that will, that will appeal more to younger readers or younger audiences. And then I want to give you one that's a little bit meatier or maybe at least middle school, high school plus um, could learn from it. So the first one is called The Pullman Porter, An American Journey. And this is the cover. And I'll post the link as well in the description box. And then the second text, which is definitely going to be more on the older student side, is called A Long Journey, The Story of the Pullman Porter. And it is by Patricia and Frederick McKissick. If you are a fan of African American children's literature, that husband and wife team is not a strange name to you. Okay, so the majority, I mean, of course, I've used online sources as well, but the majority of um, what I use to teach you in this um, video is coming from these two books and then again, some online resources. Okay, so the first thing that you want to cover is who is Pullman, right? So if we're talking about Pullman Porters, um, then who the heck is Pullman? And his full name is George Pullman, right? So once they know who that is, they'll be able to make certain predictions and draw certain conclusions about what's going on. So let's start there. George Pullman was an engineer who lived from 1831 to 1897. So I had my students stop and think, is George Pullman a white American or a black American? Just off that fact alone, they should be able to give you um, an answer to that. Okay, he designed and manufactured the Pullman sleeping car and he founded a company named Pullman in 1880. His net worth was $17.5 million at the time of his death. They should really know what's going on now. And his company was unique in that it hired African-American men to staff the Pullman cars. So first you want, to, you want to be able to explain to them who is George Pullman, right? I just gave you some basic facts. You are going to want to um, get a little bit more information about who this man was. Show them pictures. He's connected to some other prominent white Americans around this time in history. So you're gonna to wanna to give them all that background information, right? And then what was unique about his business is that he only hired African-American men, right? And there's a lot of discussion that you can have with that as well. Okay, so let's set the historical scene. This is going to be a post um, antebellum or post Civil War period. So you want to draw them in and go, okay, well, how long did the Civil War last? What were the years? of the Civil War, they should know that information. Um, if they are, I would say, fifth grade plus, if you've already studied you know, American history. Um, if not, then give it to them, teach them, and make that a part of the lesson too. 
Okay? There's nothing wrong with doing that. So, you and I both know the Civil War um, starts in 1861. It's a four-year war that ends in 1865. And so, we're talking post-Civil War. We're talking the time period after 1865, right? Um, my students understood that just fine. So, now that we have a setting, we have some historical background, you're going to want to pull from that. So, you can ask them, what was the next historical era right after the Civil War? It was Reconstruction, and you might want to pull in, like, why was Reconstruction something that happened right after the war? I'm not going to go into all that. This video will be very long. But if you don't already know the answer to that, then study some, some of the Reconstruction um, events that happened during that period of time so that you can be able to connect that history for them. Okay, so what you want to be able to draw out more than anything in this part of the lesson is what were African Americans doing in the Reconstruction era? Okay, obviously we know they were kind of kicking the dust off um, from slavery, if you will, and really set that scene for them. Like, what opportunities did they have? Why were they not able to do certain things? Why were they able to do certain things? Um, definitely talk about why, like, white Americans had thought, well, they're good now, and why did that not really work, right? So you want to draw all that in for them. And you definitely want them to understand that black men at this time were not um, employed, you know, to do certain things. So they definitely went into, um, some of them traveled up north, but a lot, you know, they resulted in sharecropping. And so you definitely want to talk about what sharecropping is and what that means because they need to understand what the attraction would be to be a porter for Pullman or to be a Pullman porter. You want them to understand that attraction. So if they, are, if they really understand what sharecropping is, they'll be able to grasp why nobody wanted to do that and why working on the railroad, railroad excuse me, would be definitely more of an attraction option than sharecropping. Okay, so this is the 19th century. If they don't already understand timeline, like the, you know, the 19th century are gonna cover the years of 1800 to 1899, you know, 20th century, um, 1900 to 1999, right? So they should be already be able to do that. If not, just throw that in for them. So, at this point, you want to be able to key in for them transportation in the 19th century, right? So, of course, today we have airplanes, and so that's what they understand, but take them back 100 plus years and have them to understand that at this time, the only way to travel was via train, and it was not fun. It was long, and it was a bumpy ride. It wasn't comfortable, and so at this point, you want to make them understand why was Pullman cars or the Pullman train, why would that be a thing? Why would people want to travel this way? How did the service that he provided, you know, alleviate them of their travel ills that they currently had? So you want to kind of zoom in on two worlds at the same time until they collide. So in white America, you know, they were traveling um, all across the United States as much as the trains were able to take certain routes and this road was bumpy and long and hard the travel was just not comfortable was not ideal and then you have black America where you have um, black families who are overwhelmingly in sharecropping situations not even sometimes it's forced it's not even to their own will and so they're able to see that we have two problems in two different worlds. And then you can even have a conversation about that. Like, this is the problem in white America, that their travel is not comfortable. Versus this is the problem in black America, that their living situations would be so hard and so unfair. Right? I mean, that alone is a discrepancy. And that's another conversation all on its own. Okay, so, but... You really wanted them to be able to see, here's the problem here, here's the problem here. Because what Pullman did was bridge the two worlds together by fixing two different problems in two different worlds. Okay? So, 
Um, what I did was I gave them a small timeline going from like late 19th century where America was really based on um, agriculture, right? So that's how they understand the sharecropping. And then I shifted the timeline to an industrial age where like factories and, you know, mining and, you know, taking the trains working the trains more so would have been a um like the base way that they worked so like this is a lot of how america americans are earning their income okay so now after they understand the agriculture they understand the industry now we're going to shift into who is a pullman porter okay so a pullman porter basically um were freed slaves post-Civil War who were hired by Pullman to work um, to work inside of his train cars, right? So now what you want them to understand at this point is why black men? Why? Right? And so, I mean, when I taught my class last month, they were full of ideas. But try to, like, help narrow them in a little bit. Okay, so we have ex-slave, they're men, they're black. You know, there's something about all three of that being true that made the black man ideal for the job. Okay, so I will allow you to have that conversation with your students or with your children as you will. Okay, so here are some discussion topics that you can definitely just, you know, have with your children, with your students, and just see what they say. Um, as long as they answer logically, it's fine. Just make sure that their answer doesn't interfere with the historical fact of the matter. Okay, so how does only hiring black men help the black community at large? How does only hiring black men help to build a unique bond between them? Okay, so... After that, you can kind of describe like what is the Pullman Porter. So there were definitely certain age requirements and height requirements and grooming requirements that they had to meet in order to be um, selected for hire. Okay, so like for example, they needed to be between 5'7 and 6'1. So if you were taller than that or shorter than that, you didn't make the cut. And then you can also explain to them why that would be. Just think about... Um, just stature alone, but then also actually having to work inside of um, a sleeping car. Okay, so as you can imagine, they were not initially, they were not treated very well, right? And so one of the slurs they were called were George, because the guy who runs the company is named George Pullman. And so it was kind of an insult. You know, to just call them George, to not call them by their given names, and to just call them George as if they were like George's boys. And so it was very insulting. Um, there, were, there were lots of um, YouTube documentaries that I were able to watch. I'll post them in the description box where Pullman Porters themselves or some of the families or descendants of um, the Pullman Porters would talk about how insulting that word was and how it made them feel and why they didn't want to be called that. So I would definitely work in a few of those documentaries, especially if you have older students. So because they were not treated well um, initially, it was very long hours, very little pay, and then they were also insulted by being called George, they needed to develop a union so they could have some fair practices, fair labor practices at the job. Okay, so they called upon the help of a. Philip Randolph. They call on his help. So I kind of like stacked it up, the problem, the solution. So here were some problems. Um, they, it was hard sleeping in working conditions. Um, they were not paid by the hour, so they had to rely on tips. They worked 400 hours per month. Sometimes they could work up to 240 hours and only get $10 sometimes. They were insultingly called George and some white passengers were mean or rude. So the solution, um, because the Pullman Porters began a union for better pay and working conditions under the leadership of Philip Randolph, and they created the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, which made history because this was the first black union um, that had a official labor contract. 
And after years of fighting, the Pullman Porters earned their union. It took 12 years. So that's a whole other conversation that you can have. You know, the unity that they had, um, the sense of pride that they had to stick together, and the... the um, respect that they had for each other to come together and trust each person to do his or her own part to establish this victory that they had. You can talk about how long it took them um, to persevere um, and to be, you know, persistent and dedicated to this cause in order to, you know, gain this victory. And then you can also talk about why did it take so long? Like what was some of the opposition and who were some of the adversaries that they had who didn't want them to get this contract and why, right? And so you can have that conversation with them too. That was a very interesting conversation that I had with my students last month. Okay, so they win, right? And so what ended up happening when they went, when they won was they were earning up to $175 per month. Their hours were reduced from 400 to 200 hours a month. And of course, with any labor contract, they had a certain sense of job security. Okay, at this point, I kind of revisited a timeline as we're moving through time because the Pullman Porters is going to cover like a 100 year history. You're gonna be like late 1800s. I'm sorry, you're gonna be like, um, mid 1800s, 1860s until you get to like 1960s. So you have about a good um, 100 years of the Pullman Porters having its influence in American history. So at this point, I move into the early 1900s, 1920s, 1925, you know, and I'm going over um, by 1920s, the Pullman cars become a staple. 1925, Randolph kind of comes on board to assist them. I throw in a president. You should be able to know where we are in history when, you know, we add some of these presidents in because mo most students, their president knowledge is pretty solid. Um, and then we kind of go through World War One, World War II, um, not the events of it, just the timeline, right? And then I move into how the Pullman Porters benefited the black community. Okay, so this is where it gets good, right? This is what we've been waiting for. So the Pullman Porters benefit the black community in a few ways. So you can just pull out whichever point um, is of interest to you. So I'll just list them. Um, it was more economic stability than the average black community. Um, their families had a better quality of life. They were able to send their children to school, be a vocational school or college, but more than likely it was college. And their children became lawyers, teachers, doctors, engineers, and more. They did not have to plow a field or work in service or labor jobs to support themselves. Um, I had a list of some African proverbs and some African American quotes that dealt with education and wealth at this point. And we stopped and we talked about that. What does this mean? What does this African proverb mean? Um, why would it be important to the African people if the proverb specified a particular nation or a particular tribe? Then I zoomed in a little bit and had them to ponder ways in why this would be beneficial or important to the Botswana people or to the Bantu people, for example, um, if I had that information in terms of that that quote or that um, proverb. Okay, then I went into how Pullman Porters contributed to the struggle of the black community. So there, I'm just gonna list a few points. There, it's, you know, this list could go on forever. Um, the children of Pullman Porters were able to move north for education and remain there to have a better life. Um, they participated in what we know as the Great Migration. Pullman Porters had access to black newspapers like the Chicago Defender or the Pittsburgh Courier to take back to their communities. These newspapers often gave Southerners information on how and where they could escape segregation and like Jim Crow laws and the violence that was happening back home. Pullman Porters had more money than others, so they contributed more to like community activism. And then also Pullman Porters, along with Randolph's help, are credited with starting with the starting of the Civil Rights Movement. Um, the connection there would be the um, Montgomery bus boycott. Um, Randolph got involved with that. Him and another civil rights leader, um, Edie Nixon, um, and they were both Pullman, um, Pullman Porters themselves. 
And so that was the bridge where the front runners that kind of helped lead the Montgomery bus boycott were also Pullman Porters. And so now you have Pullman Porters meeting what would be known as the Civil Rights Movement. And so they are credited with spearheading that. All right, and then here's the time to go back to your American history timeline because now we're like 40s, 50s, and kind of pull out some major events for them there that they are going to be pretty familiar with. So I'll give you a few, 1920s to 1940s, the Great Migration. Of course, in 1955, we have Rosa Parks refusing to give up her bus seats. And then, of course, we have the Montgomery Bus Boycott, which is 1955 to 1956. Um, I kind of threw in Motown Records and we listened to a little bit of music. Um, most of the music at that time is going to be, you know, centered around like social change. And so I, we talked about why that would be the case. It's like social change or some type of injustice. Um, then I talked about the booming of America's economy and this um, kind of genesis of the black and middle class. So at this point, I needed to stop and define some words. So I went through, you know, what does it mean to be poor, the working class, the middle class, the upper class, and the rich, the rich, excuse me, slash elite. Kind of combined those words together. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so now that they understand what that is, we talked about cash flow. We talked about credit. I kind of worked in a lot of financial literacy so they could understand, you know, like, Green is power too. And so at this point, like blacks have some leverage in terms of cash flow because we, the majority of um, the descendants of Pullman Porters are educated. And so they have what we would call back then like good paying jobs and um, they can contribute to the economy. Okay, so. Um, then I kind of transition and go into what did the porters learn? What did they spend their money on and what were the results? So I'll give you a few discussion points again. Um, they supported their families. They saved their money and put their children and their grandchildren through college and um, graduate school in some cases. They witnessed the way that wealthy white passengers behaved and the importance of education. Pullman porters were well-traveled which was awesome. That really, really helped our community um, back in the 50s and 60s. And Pullman Porters helped to create a class of black professionals like um, Malcolm X and Thur um, Thurgood Marshall, among others. Um, you can just, you know, Google descendants of Pullman Porters and a good little list pops right on up. I talked a little bit about building our own communities having our own housing, um, and I like showed them pictures of black American families and black American communities in the 50s and the 60s, and I mean, they were very shocked. They were like, wow, all of these communities are just black, and look at these black families. Of course, they were predominantly headed by black men, and so that was one of the links that they made um, about how did um, the hire of only African American men help the African-American family and the African-American community at large. So they easily made that link. All right, so now we kind of move into the mid 60s, which is going to kind of bring um, the conclusion to the Pullman Porters. So um, I just added a few facts for them. Um, before 1964, it was legal and common to deny employment, which affected housing, or sometimes they refused to hire black. So that was, kind of a standard practice before 1964. So I talked a lot about the mid 60s and a lot of the laws that were changed for you know black um, civil rights in, in America. So we talked about um, by the mid 1960s, blacks lived in all black communities with the middle class salaries and in lots of ways the children of Pullman Porters were able to aid in supporting and building black communities. And black America was very united and very strong. Um, in 1963, Randolph kind of um, retires his role as a black activist and kind of hands the reins over to Dr. King. And so they're very, very familiar with Dr. King and his work um, by the time we get to 1964 and on into the late 60s. 
Okay, so the late 60s is going to bring Pullman Porters to a close. And so here's the time to talk about why um, does this era end, All right? And so it ends because think about what the Pullman Porters do, like they're on trains. And so we talked about the evolution of transportation. And so of course, in the mid to late 60s, airplanes become um, the big thing to do. And so as you can imagine, as air travel becomes very popular, train travel kind of declines and so there's no longer a need for Pullman Porters. And then I left them with some descendants of Pullman Porters. So I'll give you a few and then you can kind of Google your way through the rest. So it would be Goldberg, um, Gordon Parks, which a lot of my students didn't know who that was and it broke my heart. So if you guys, uh, if your students don't know who that is, go ahead and teach them about Gordon Parks. He is a very prolific person to know in our community. Um, you also have um, Alex Haley, you have Matthew Henson, and there's more, there's a lot, so you guys can Google that. Um, okay, so that is what I have for you for Pullman Porters. I do believe my next video will be on A. Philip Randolph. If you have a particular Black History topic or a Black History event that you would like me to cover, please let me know. Put it um, in the comments below and I will do my best to get around to it. I hope this was helpful for you. Shalom.